Every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. I remember this quote when I found the boat. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days on a deserted survival island. Our journey begins with me, the coffee fuel genius, and an empty inventory. Let's begin. Well, this was a silly idea. It was day one on the survival island and I had no resources, no food. I needed to work quickly because if nightfall came and I was unprepared, it would be game over. I made as many tools as possible and prayed, prayed that the tree dropped a sapling. And thank goodness me, it did. It dropped three saplings which I planted around the island. I then farmed up as much grass as I could in hopes that it would drop seeds to make wheat. I had a turtle on the island to keep me sane while I extended it slightly to make a small farm in which I would plant my seeds. With the farm now complete, that would mean I had an unlimited food source, thank goodness. It was now time to spend the rest of day one working on an underground base. By doing this, I would save resources and protect myself from the ghoulish undead late at night. The underground base was finished and I had a full set of stone tools. I was hungry and my wheat hadn't grown yet so I needed to think fast. I made a sword and headed out to sea to kill as many fish as I could. Yes, I felt slightly guilty because they were just minding their own fishy business. But you know what? I was hungry and there's plenty more fish in the sea. I made a couple of doors and then sealed up my underground base. Now, they were wooden and in hardcore survival, zombies can break them, but it was better than nothing. With no bed and sleep deprivation setting in, I mined all night of day one for more resources such as coal and cobblestone. I mean, I just made some stairs to make going up and down the base a little bit easier, you know. I couldn't really do much, I was limited being in the caves all night. <laughs> Day two already, so I decided to aesthetically improve my island just slightly. I added a, like a small cobblestone hut around my cave. It, it wasn't much, but you know, it's just me on the island. There's no one to judge. I decided to make some minor improvements here and there as well. Now, once again, without a bed, I had to spend the evening of day two mining for more resources. I did find some iron, so that was great. Um, and then I just spent all night mining, mining and mining and mining and mining because there was nothing else I could do. Day three was the day in which I realized I was going to be stuck on this island alone for a very, very long time. So I decided to work on my farm just slightly to make more wheat because I needed more food. I then proceeded to smelt all the ores from the night before and then made a few iron tools. It was going well. Once again, you guessed it, the night of day four, I spent my time mining. More mining, mining. There was nothing else I could do on this island. I started to go insane just... <gasps> Finally, I'd found some diamonds which would improve my chances of getting off this island. It's like seeing a plate of your favorite food. The juices, the texture, diamond is just the best. I was in a bit of a better mood day five, I must admit. Diamonds in the inventory, food in the inventory. You know, things were looking great. I smelted all my ores then headed into my strip mine to collect obsidian. I mined as much obsidian as I could. I think I'd roughly mined around about 9 obsidian on day 5. Day 6 was a strange one. I was visited by this strange being and he informed me that I need to head to the end because they're being terrorized by a dragon. So I agreed that I was sorted out for him but I just need a bit of time and resources. If I was to save the end from this dragon, I would need to improve on my fighting technique. So I spent the night of day six defending my island from ghoulish spiders and evil drowned beings. I worked my hardest. I was fearing for the turtle's life at this point. I thought there's no way that this drowned monster would eliminate my only friend. So I used my shield to defend his trident throws. No! 
Oh, thank goodness, he's alive. But then I was attacked by phantoms. They were coming at me left, right, and center. I just didn't know what to do. So I headed into my base just for a second to gather my thoughts. I headed out to try and kill the drowned being, but there was no chance. It was almost over. They could have killed me then. It was just too risky. I decided to eat my food and relax the rest of the night. Whew, that was a close one. I needed to work on something more substantial. A real base. Whilst building, I was interrupted multiple times by creepers. I was so close, but once again, interrupted by phantoms. I was almost finished. What a very, very busy few days, fighting monsters, building my base. It was time to just cool it down, you know, go fishing, extend my farm. I was so proud of how far I'd come in the last few days. I spent the rest of the evening of day 10 inside my main base, watching as my enemies tried to defeat me, but they had no chance. Day 11 was here and I collected as much wood as I could because I wanted to box in my farm. I just thought it looked weird, just a, a bunch of soil, like extended from the island. So I boxed it in using wooden planks and a bunch of fences. This ran all the way into day 12. I aesthetically improved the farm just slightly with stone slabs and torches. And then I just farmed up all of the wheat and planted more seeds. You know, the usual. Uh, again, I was fighting phantoms. There's still a pain in my backside. And then I spent the night time mining as much as I could. But I didn't find any diamonds, unfortunately. Unexpectedly, in the nightfall of day 13, I was attacked by a group of drowned monsters. Now, one of them had a trident, but he just kept hiding away in the ocean. It was really difficult to get a view on him. He tried throwing tridents at me left, right, and center, but he wasn't successful, and then he just fleed. He, he just left me alone. I then spent the evening of day 14 collecting resources and more obsidian. <laughs> The night of peaceful mining was over, so I decided to build a composter and make as much food as possible. And then I just decided to add a chimney onto my little house. I just thought maybe someone will see the smoke and come and save me. Then the drowned with the trident returned, but stood no match against me and my shield. The dolphins came and helped me out as well, which was an absolute bonus. Without a bed, this was just getting really tough. I bred my turtles together, then headed back inside because I just couldn't do anything at night. I, I was just attacked by phantoms left, right, and center. Things were looking up. I built a small enclosure for the turtles and then I decided to flatten the entire terrain for more space. I then dedicated the next few days to building a bigger structure. The house was complete, so I decided to fill it out with chests and workbenches, furnaces, lanterns, and then I decided to head out the night of day 25 because I really needed a bed. I was sick of fighting phantoms. On the day of 26, I decided to build somewhere specifically to grow trees, and then in the night time, I needed more string. I needed that cotton, so I headed out to fight those spiders. I was completely surrounded, zombies, phantoms, but I needed that spider, I needed that string. It was so close though, they all ganged up on me and I needed to run back to my base. My mission was almost successful. I picked up that piece of string and I only needed one more, one more, so I headed out to kill the spider I spotted in my wheat farm. He dropped a piece of string. Finally, I could craft a bed. 
yes, my first good night's sleep on the island. I felt incredible. I made a few improvements to my house, made it look a bit more snazzy, and then yes, you guessed it, it was time to face Hell's Gates. I dedicated the next few days to building a space for my nether portal. The portal was complete. It made a fine addition to the island. It was time. I made myself some gold boots. A new shield. It was time to face hell. I was terrified. I never thought I'd live to see the nether in person, only hear about it in gruesome stories, telling of its evil endless pits and pools of lava. I quickly covered the nether portal for protection, but I needed more cobblestone. I didn't want to risk losing the portal, because if I had lost that connection between the overworld and the nether, there was no coming back. I finished off protecting the nether portal and collected some bone, and then I found this snorting piglin that would barter with me. He gave me some fire resistance potions, which would be excellent for finding that fortress and killing those blazes. The piglin snorted at me, informing that I needed to be more prepared if I was going to face the fortress, so I headed back to the overworld. On the evening of day 39, I decided to head into my strip mine. I wanted to gather as much of the resources as I could. Lapis, coal, gold, so I could barter with more piglins. I found some diamonds along the way. Not as much as I'd like, though, so I dedicated a few days just to try and find diamonds. <laughs> I wasn't massively successful here, I only found about 12 diamonds, but it'll do for now. I then dedicated the next few days to making a bow, some diamond armor, and the enchantment table. Being on a survival island was really limiting. I barely had any resources and couldn't build bookshelves with leather, so I went to barter with the piglin in hopes it would drop more leather, but he just gave me a bunch of fire resistance potions. I finally had enough just to level up the enchantment table a little bit. Now, I didn't have the best enchantments, but it was better than nothing. Feeling more prepared, I headed into the nether. Now, let me tell you, no gear can erase the fear. I was still very, very nervous. Somehow, straight away, the zombie pigmen came after me. Like, I did literally nothing wrong here. Like, I was trying to save them from the gas. Like, I was trying to have your back here. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? So, I just headed back and farmed and killed some time, improved my house area, because I needed to wait for the zombie pigmen to cool down. I had took a good long look at everything I'd achieved so far. This could be where I lost it all. I was so proud of how far I'd come in just so few days. After treading very cautiously, it seemed that the zombie pigmen had calmed down. Friendship was restored, so I progressed into the nether, collecting resources, trudging through soul sand. I made small markers with cobblestone and torches to allow me to locate where I had been. I had covered a lot of ground. I climbed up, dug my way down, killed ghasts, taken out skeletons, when finally, finally, after hours of searching, I found the nether fortress. The very fortress the piglin told me about. I'd done it, so I built a big marker and headed back home because I wanted to grab the fire resistance potions I had. Now, in my journey home, I almost died to a ghast. It was almost game over. Somehow, somehow, I managed to dodge his bullets. I couldn't get home fast enough. I rushed as quickly as I could, taking out enemies as I found them. I made it back to the portal. It was time to grab those potions. Yes, it was nice to be back somewhere I was familiar, but I didn't want to get too comfortable. I needed to quickly make those gold bars and grab those potions. I needed to head back into the nether to tackle that fortress. My hands were shaking. It could all end here. The heat radiated from the nether brick. I made my way very cautiously onto the outskirts of the fortress. I navigated the maze-like corridors very, very carefully. I was hunting for that blaze spawner. I found it. It was time. <laughs> After 
after extinguishing the blaze rods, I collected all the nether wart, looted the chests, and killed with the skeletons. I had to get out of there, it was too risky, so I made a fiery escape. I dodged the wrath of the gaps. Whew, we made it. Finally I was home, so I made some diamond boots, enchanted them with protection 3, and made some brewing stands. Now it was time to make a place where I could make potions. The brewing area was finally finished, so I got to work making as many potions as I could. Now the fundamental potion I needed was an awkward potion, so thank goodness I grabbed as much nether wart as I could from the fortress. I then used phantom membrane to make slow falling potions. This would help me when I'm killing the ender dragon. I then used redstone to extend the length of them and a bunch of blaze powder to make strength 2 potions. Wow, we come so far. It was time, yes, you guessed it, it was time to find that stronghold, so I positioned myself and threw the Eye of Ender high into the sky. Feeling well rested and a belly full of food, it was time, you guessed it, to head to the stronghold. Wish me luck. I, I, I was pretty emotional, I won't lie, it was the first time leaving the island. The first time seeing mainland. I made a small outpost, took a deep breath, it was time- Okay, no, okay, okay, I didn't really go to the stronghold. I found a- I found a living, breathing animal, so I brought him back to the survivor island, and then I thought, am I going to find some more animals? So I found a chicken! I found a chicken! A real-life chicken! Which then I could use the feathers to make more arrows! So, you could go as far to say that I chickened out here. Yes, I didn't go to the stronghold, I brought back the chicken, and then bred as many chickens as I could. I headed over to explore. I made a best friend, like I was really excited that the parrot and me had formed a bond. Finally, a friend on this lonely journey. I spent a lot of time breeding chickens, like a lot. I needed as many feathers as possible, and then I used the gravel to get flint. I just needed arrows, like there's no way I was taking on this ender dragon without arrows. No messing around. It was time. It was finally time to head into the end and kill that ender dragon. I spent days looking for the stronghold. Days. After an exhausting few days, I think I finally found the stronghold. I dug my way down looking for that mossy brick and I found it. Wow. I felt insanely lucky. I had fallen right upon the portal. Like, what are the chances of that? I then filled in the portal with the Eyes of Ender, but then I realized I didn't have enough. Like, I, I only had 12 when I needed 15. So I headed back. I quickly headed to the brewing stand, which then I would use the rest of the blaze powder. Oh, I was nervous. It was time. Wow, it, it was so dark and there were Endermen everywhere. I slurped up my slow falling potion and witnessed the dragon swipe away the enderman. I was so, so nervous. I started taking shots, dodging the dragon's fireballs. I had to destroy the crystals. I took numerous shots and my aim was quite impressive. I was making fantastic progress, eliminating those crystals. I couldn't quite hit the last few, so I climbed the towers. I destroyed another crystal and made my way down. Only one to go. I used my water bucket to climb the tower.
The dragon was furious. He had seen that I had removed all of the crystals. It was now my time to strike. The dragon could fly no more, so I headed down and attacked the beast. He tried to escape, but my arrow shots and strength two potion was too much for him. I did it! I freed the end from the ender dragon! I collected all of that glorious XP. Hey, <laughs> we did it, little guy. I then collected the dragon egg. I made it home. Now it was time to build somewhere to showcase the dragon egg. <laughs> I created a small storage facility. Ah, we'd made it. 100 days. Thank you so much to each and every single one of you for watching my videos. The response so far has been completely overwhelming and I cannot thank you enough. It means the absolute world to me. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. I'm the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace out.